Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overclocker magazine. Today I'm here to talk to you about the Z790 Aorus Elite X Wi-Fi 7. So the first thing you want to know about this motherboard is how much it costs. Well, I have no idea. By the time you see this video, you probably should be able to tell how much the motherboard is from various online retailers. But at the time that I did this review, there were no prices out. With that said though, I would be shocked if this motherboard is more than nine and a half grand. But even if it was nine and a half grand, it actually is one of the best gigabyte experiences I have ever had. And that's in large part due to the virus. But before that, let's get into some of the changes that are on the Wi-Fi 7 that are different from what I had on the Elite AX, which is actually the forebearer of this motherboard. The board layout and many of the features are identical. As such, if you want a breakdown of the onboard features and connectivity options, click the link below this video to go to that review. Barring the addition of Wi-Fi 7, there's not much to say connectivity-wise. That said, not everything is identical and there are some differences that are worth highlighting. First is M.2 Easy Latch and Latch Plus. These are not groundbreaking features, but the mechanism used on this board makes it the easiest board to install M.2 drives I've ever used. No need for any screwdriver at any point because there are simply no screws. This is a feature I'd like to see more of on all Gigabyte and Aorus motherboards going forward. The heatsink for the VRM seems a bit more capable. Not sure if this is any different from the Elite AX, but I'm pretty confident the board is much heavier primarily due to these heatsinks. The rest of the board is pretty much identical to the Elite AX apart from the graphics on the M.2 heatsink. In fact, if I had to swap out this B-roll from the Wi-Fi 7 to that of the original Elite board, many of us would not be able to tell the difference. As such, let's get to what I deem the biggest change on this motherboard and certainly what I appreciate more than anything else and that's the new BIOS interface. Quite literally, it has taken years and I mean over a decade to get here. Gigabyte had the worst BIOS user interface in all of the tier 1 motherboard vendors, but now could claim to have one of the best. It isn't outright the best because there are many of the legacy gremlins that still haunt this new interface, but for the most part, it is nothing short of incredible. It's fast, it's high resolution, full HD, the mouse is smooth, save for a few select areas, and it has plenty of new features that help extract performance from the CPU and memory. For example, the CPU optimization menu comes to mind. In fact, this is where you can select from Spec Enhance, Unleash, Instant 6GHz and a few other options. Each one tuning the CPU accordingly, either focusing on lowering temperatures and thus power draw or increasing performance or a balance of the two. I ended up using a combination of these options along with my own offset voltages for the P-Course. Instant 6GHz was a little unstable until I added 25mV to the 60x ratio. Outside of that, I'm super excited by what Gigabyte has been able to do when it comes to memory overclocking. The Wi-Fi 7 is an 8-layer PCB board that uses a daisy chain topology to maximize clock frequencies. There are obviously some other aspects to achieving high DRAM speeds, but suffice to say this board is certified for DDR5-8266. I may not have been able to make DDR5-8266 stable, but I could at least post it, which is more than what I can say for any other 14 board I've ever tested to date. DDR5-8000 was a little easier to stabilize, but even then, I was not able to do this on another high-end motherboard, whereas the Wi-Fi 7 through the DRAM profiles just didn't skip a beat. I just loaded the profile and Bob's your uncle. Gigabyte has done an amazing job at overhauling the user interface of the UEFI. It isn't perfect, but it's many, many times better than what was previously there before. And I have to say, it's elevated the Gigabyte experience quite tremendously. And now it's time for the benchmarks. First up is IDA64 memory bandwidth. We have nothing out of the ordinary here except for the fact that the Wi-Fi 7 is a little on the slow side. I'm not sure why that is, but it's not the only board I tested that behaves this way. That said, the overclock here is a combination of the instant 6 GHz option and a few offset voltages on the P course to further reduce temperatures. I settled on DDR5-7600 CL38 as a speed that everyone using any form of Hynix A die based 16 gigabit memory should be able to pull off. An overclocked 14700K seems more than capable of dispensing with the Core i9-3900K for the most part as you'll see in the benchmarks to come. In 3 d Mark, for some reason the overclock does little to nothing and the performance is far lower than expected. I've not had a chance to investigate this but the Wi-Fi 7 even when overclocked doesn't impress here at all. 
In handbrake, however, the overclocked 14700K takes the lead, and true to what I said before, proves that it is more than capable of handling a Core i9-13900K running at its reference clocks. Cinebench 2024 shows that even at default settings, the Core i7-14700K on the Wi-Fi 7 can produce better results than the Core i9-13900K baseline performance. Impressive given the core count deficit. The older Cinebench R23 doesn't scale in the same way, however, and the Core i9-13900K is running through the 14700K with ease. Even an overclock can't fix this. Still, the performance from the overclocked 14700K adds almost 2000 points from the reference 14700K result. Next up we have V-Ray. The overclocked 1400K conducts its business admirably, showing up the 13900K. Finally, we get to the power consumption. I ran this several times over, and the overclock when using the instant 6 GHz and P core voltage offsets of negative 60 mV results in the in-game power consumption decreasing. Better performance for lower power consumption is always a good thing, and I'm pretty happy that I was able to do this on the Wi-Fi 7. Temperatures of course match that. Temperature is excellent where all configurations are staying below the 70 degree mark, including the overclock settings when using Forza Horizon 5. The default operating temperature for the Wi-Fi 7 when using the 14700K is exceptional with low temperatures of just 58 degrees. All right, with that said, you've seen the performance, you've seen the epic BIOS, you've seen the amazing DDR5 overclocking capabilities that this motherboard has. But most of all, the BIOS, man, like the BIOS for me has changed everything. You know, I will be honest with you and say that a lot of the times I would not want to necessarily put together a system based on gigabyte motherboards. Reason being, the BIOS was just a pain for me right? Obviously, it's something that you configure once and leave it like that. However, when you do have to use it, it was really a pain. So seeing this new virus that they are using, or rather the new interface, it just literally blew me away. I just couldn't believe how well put together it is. Artistically, it's better than Gigabyte has ever produced before. In terms of speed, in terms of smoothness, and just the quality of the features that it actually has on, second to none and talk about those memory profiles 28 28 i mean how do you say no to that that is excellent and i'm hoping to see more of this from gigabyte going forward and best of all the memory overclocking is exactly what it says it is you know a lot of the times the board will say that it's certified for memory at x speed you try the exact same timings with the exact same ic and you can't do that but with this one i was able to do that the fact that i was able to post the motherboard at 8266 on a 4 dim board for me is just breathtaking and i was even able to do that with a 13th gen core cpu so yeah it actually talks to about the minerals of this motherboard by far this is not the most high-end motherboard that i've used from gigabyte but it most certainly is the best experience i have ever had from a gigabyte motherboard and that is through decades of testing these uh, gigabyte boards so Whoever is responsible for the new BIOS at Gigabyte, they have done an excellent job and they've actually managed to elevate the entire Gigabyte experience to a level previously unreachable. So now, if you're looking at buying a master or any of those other motherboards, you get a BIOS and software that matches the actual quality of the hardware, which was not possible before. But with the new BIOS interface, they've actually managed to do that. And once again, that memory OC, oh, very 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 happy with what gigabyte has done here anyway if you are feeling like you're needing an upgrade but you don't want to break the bank i would seriously recommend this motherboard or rather i would seriously consider it because for my experience in what it was able to do wow i have never had a gigabyte motherboard behave in this way and impress me this much with that said remember to share like subscribe and i'll see you guys on the flip side so take care and peace